Guys, in this RGT video, we're going to be taking a look at graphics cards as they stand of February 2012. If you're not particularly heavily into tech and you're looking for a good starting point, this video is for you. As I'm going to be taking a look at what you should be avoiding, marketing ploys, that kind of thing. And I won't be getting into too much technical detail, just giving you a few examples of what you should buy and what you should not buy. So, PC gaming pretty much comes down to the graphics card quite a lot of the time. The processor is responsible for supplying data to the graphics card, but the graphics card is basically responsible for what resolution you can play at, the level of texture details, and so on. So, if you want to turn your PC into a gaming machine, the primary stop you need to look at is the graphics card, in most cases anyway. Now, if you've got a really old machine, you might need to upgrade everything, um, but I'm going to be assuming that you either starting from scratch or you've got a pretty decent machine, you just need to kind of give it that little bit of a push in the right direction, and that, in which case the graphics card is definitely the right thing to start with. They start out from anything from around the low 40 uh, mark, 40 pounds that is, all the way up to four to 500 pounds. Um, I'll have to you know, forgive the use of pounds, I'm not sure what they are in dollars, I haven't done any research at the moment, so there you have it. Now anything, to be honest, that cheap, 40 pounds is not going to be sufficient to play games and you're really looking at something along the lines of maybe 90 pounds plus. For 90, you could probably buy yourself something like the GTX 460. Um, there are a couple of brands at the moment on sale for that price. Um, they're from the video. You also get one gigabyte of RAM on those cards. And for personal experience, I have a few friends who use those cards regularly. They overclock really well. Um, just a very brief overview on what overclocking is. Overclocking is the practice of running your hardware faster than the manufacturer advertises it actually runs. So for example, let's say you have a processor clock speed of 500 megahertz. Well, you might be able to run it at say 550 or 600. So for example, 10% performance increase for free. Um, the 460s run really well. You can usually get 10% to 20% extra in performance. Um, the one gigabyte frame buffer does slightly hurt in some instances, but to be honest, you know, for a relatively cheap budget card, it's going to pretty much destroy most games you'll want to play, um, and it's a good starting point. For my AMD, if you prefer that, um, you can also get the 6850s or 6870s. So they're pretty good cards to start with. You can also probably pick yourself up a cheap 470. Or 480 from um, Nvidia, and if you want to go for the more expensive, or should I say the later lines, you can also go for the 560s, 570s, or 580s. The 580s, however, can be very expensive. You're looking at three to four hundred pounds. So you know, just be aware of that. The 560s are going to be pretty decent, and the 570s roughly the same performance as the GTX 480s from the previous generation. So if you can get a GTX 480 for a pretty decent price, um, maybe uh, low stock, or kind of you know, just getting rid of the last few that they have, that might be the good, that might be a good option. Um, cards now generally range from one to two gigs of RAM. Uh, there are a few which come with free, but for the most part, unless you're running very high resolution displays, um, and by high resolution I'm talking like 2560 uh, plus. You're probably not going to need these, or maybe if you've got, say, dual screen eye affinity setups, for example, that might be worth it. Otherwise, not so much. Um, I also want to point out that with graphics cards, you definitely don't want to get a card that has more RAM unless you do some research on it. I'll tell you why. There's two reasons for this. The first is Sometimes manufacturers will put on slower RAM, but more of it. So for example, they might have two gigs of it rather than one, but that RAM actually runs a lot slower than one gigabyte RAM. So in other words, the performance will oftentimes be no better, if not slightly worse, especially if that card right at that second is not using all the RAM up, um, or all the one gig up, for example, it will definitely be worse performance. So, generally speaking, you want to be very careful before you buy your card. You definitely want to research 
that specific model, not just that specific line. So for example, if you want to buy the 460, don't just type in a 460 review, type in 462 gigs from that manufacturer um, before you Google. I know most of you already will do that, but I have known a few people who have got burnt by this in the past, which is okay, why I mention it. You better get down here fast. The second reason is because sometimes the card simply is not capable of utilizing that extra memory. In other words, the graphics processor on the card is not powerful enough to really utilize that extra bit of RAM. Um, examples of this are, let's say you have 2 gigabytes on a, you know, a lower end card. Is it really going to need it? Um, are you going to run out of graphical grunt before you run out of memory? In other words, if you turn up the resolution to say 1080p, which is pretty much when you're going to really need more than one gigabyte of RAM. For the most part, you know, one gig's fine for 1080p, but in some cases if you have high levels of anti-aliasing or anisotropic filtering, you might need a bit more. Um, is the card actually even going to be able to provide its CPU, or sorry, GPU-wise, for the memory to even make the difference? In some cases, no. So you're just wasting more money anyway. You might as well just get a cheaper, lower memory card save the extra 20 or 30 pounds, bucks, whatever you want to call it, and upgrade in 6 or 12 months time and put the other on eBay. That would be a far better use of your money. For the most part, for the most part now, graphics cards rely on a secondary power source other than, the, other than your motherboard, um, in other words, your power supply. If you have a very high-end graphics card, such as, for example, the GTX 5, 80 or the 570 what have you you're probably going to want to check that your graphics card um, is going to be able to be provided enough power by your power supply unit um, if you have bought your system um, pre-made shall we say there's a slight possibility that your graphics cards won't have enough juice provided by by the power supply your power supply generally in pre-made systems is iffy to say the least and doesn't have enough voltages going through the rails and therefore it can lead to system instability and crashing therefore if you are going to buy a new um, graphics card I would recommend you check your power supply first make sure that it's capable of doing so so you want to factor that into the price before you actually buy it otherwise you could end up needing to budget for two things rather than just one so I just want to point that out there Next of all, what is SLI or Crossfire? SLI and Crossfire are simply the practice of having two cards on the same system. You can't Crossfire, say for example, an ATR with an NVIDIA, rather obviously, and you also, for the most part, need to have pretty much the same card times two. So for example, I'll just use the GTX 460s because they're pretty pretty cheap now. I'm not saying they're the best cards out there, I'm just using them as an example if you can get a good. So if you put in say a GTX 460 that's one gigabyte and a GTX 460 that's two gigabytes, the two gigabyte card will act so it's only got one gig. And in terms of clock speeds, once again, it will go as fast as the slowest card. So if one card's 500 megahertz and the other one's 550, the 550 megahertz card will downclock to 500. So that's just something to bear in mind. Generally speaking, it's pointless SLIing really cheap cards, um, and you never get twice the performance out of them anyway. So, for example, if you SLI two cards, you're never going to get exactly twice the frame rate. Certain games have better performance than others, and some games aren't even compatible with either SLI or Crossfire or both. Another point to quickly bear in mind, if you SLI two cards, it doesn't mean you get twice the RAM. So, for example, if you have two 480s in SLI, both cards have 1.5 gigs. That does not mean you suddenly have 3 gigs of t uh, video memory. It still means that you have only 1.5, as what happens is the textures are loaded onto both cards' memories. It's mirrored. Next of all, please bear in mind that you're also going to have to be taking a look at the card's thermal efficiency. And by that, I mean what kind of heat it produces. Before... You buy just make sure the card has enough room in the case in fact I do know of one or two people who have bought a card and quite literally the case is not large enough to support the card they've had to actually buy a new case and transfer all of their PC into the new case and then put the card in in fact I've actually heard of one or two people have even bought a new case 
and they've had to actually remove one of the dot drive slots because the case wasn't even large enough because some of the cards are pretty big, 10, 11 inches. So that's just something to bear in mind. However, regardless, you also want to make sure the card is sufficiently cooled. Um, and that's another point to look out for manufacturers. Certain manufacturers will put in far better coolers, so you definitely want to go with the, you know, the cooler card, quite literally. Um, just don't go silly with it. You don't necessarily need the water cooled, you know, low end card. It's just pointless. Um, just go with something that's sensible and suits your case. As I've mentioned, various manufacturers, um, once they've actually got the chipsets from either NVIDIA or ATI, will put their own little spins on them. In certain cases, it means that they'll either slightly alter the clock speed, add extra RAM, as I already mentioned, put different outputs on, or put different uh, bundles in, what have you. MSI, for example, bundles MSI Afterburner, which allows easy overclocking. Um, although it does work for any card, so for example, if you happen to have a card from a different manufacturer, you can use MSI Afterburner on it, just to point it out. Also, take a look at pre-overclocked cards. Generally speaking, I don't bother with pre-overclocked cards, I just do my own overclocking. Um, as a quick general rule of thumb, you can get around 10% extra performance out of a card. Generally, not all the time. Sometimes it can be 20%, sometimes it can only be 1%. So, just something to bear in mind. Anyway, I think I've just about covered everything I want to in this video. I'll be putting out a more complicated video soon. For example, what um, anstropic filtering is, what anti-aliasing is, as well as examples of both. Um, I'll also be going into hardware tessellation, physics, and so on. So, that'll be pretty cool for you guys. So, with all of that said hope you guys have found it at least slightly useful. Bye for now and take care.